Thank you, Dr. Harrell. Um, the trial to assess chelation therapy was a federally funded uh, trial of a commonly used alternative medicine treatment, that is chelation therapy for cardiovascular disease. As the trial was designed, we realized that um, chelation therapy often was accompanied by high doses of oral um, vitamins and minerals. And so we felt that we had to have some control. Um, otherwise, the study would be uh, confounded and it would be harder to interpret uh, precisely what was going on. For that reason, the clinical trial design was out of a factorial trial, where it, it's really two trials in one, where you do chelation um, versus placebo infusions, and uh, patients also uh, receive either oral vitamins and minerals or oral uh, placebo. So you end up with four cells. Uh, we previously presented the chelation uh, results at the American Heart Association and showed that there was modest benefit in a combined cardiovascular endpoint of uh, first time to first occurrence of uh, death, uh, recurrent uh, myocardial infarction, uh, stroke, uh, revascularization, or hospitalization for angina. In this uh, presentation, uh, we looked at the other side of it, which is the oral vitamins versus the pl oral placebos, and found that the difference um, of 11 percent uh, relative difference uh, between groups was not statistically significant. We also um, looked at the four factorial cells and found that um, in the placebo-placebo uh, group, when that was compared to the active-active group, uh, there was a significant difference uh, between both of them. And it appeared that perhaps that small um, incremental uh, benefit from vitamins might be added to the chelation benefit. The um, message um, here, I think, really is a cautious message. Uh, we are, uh, we've moved something that has been um, an alternative medicine treatment into, uh, perhaps, into the, into the realm of scientific inquiry and found some unexpected results that uh, merit uh, further research. Uh, we don't think that the results of any single trial um, are enough to carry this novel hypothesis into um, daily use for patients who've had acute myocardial infarction. Well, thank you, Dr. Lamas. Uh, I'd like to have our two discussants uh, discuss the paper. Well, again, I think this is a, a tremendous effort for which the whole group should be congratulated to, to look at this alternative form of treat therapies that have been out for, for decades. And, and to put some science into it. And uh, I think we cannot um, negate that there is a signal. You're seeing a signal. The question is, what is the signal due to? Um, is it a combined effect? Does one therapy has more effect than the other? It opens a lot of questions, as you uh, indicated when you, when you presented it. Also, the vitamin list is just a huge list. Was this list selected mostly because that's what the chelation people tend to use? Yes, that, this, that's I mean, actually, a, that's precisely <laughs> uh, the way we did it. I, I, I am a conventionally trained cardiologist, as, as, as are you, and uh, I suspect that our knowledge of the biochemistry of vitamins is really quite similar. Mm -hmm. Um, Limited. <laughs> similar. Um, and um, this is really not vitamin therapy as a supplement to a deficient diet. This is uh, vitamins used as a pharmacologic um, uh, treatment. So a uh, committee really, of uh, alternative medicine or of chelation practitioners um, assisted us in uh, designing uh, these vitamins. So I, I cannot tell you um, what, I don't have a proposed mechanism. Yeah. To a certain extent, we're at the opposite end as Dr. Tardif, right. who came, who has come through a 
really a traditional um, scientific development. We're starting at the other end. Yeah. Now, the vitamins were taken only during the duration of chelation, correct? No, that's not, no, that's not actually. They oh, were... Okay. Um, because chelation they, is they a were, process that takes several weeks. Right. Um, well, the, the chelation infusions, there were 40 infusions. Okay. Um, the first 30, um, and again, it's, this is arduous. Every, each infusion takes at least three hours. Uh, so 30 infusions, one per week, okay. and then the next 10, two to four weeks apart, so really two to eight weeks apart. Um, vitamins were supposed to be taken for the entire, the high-dose oral vitamins for the entire duration of the study. You actually study. Oh, wow. So and that they is were, you saw, you saw <laughs> the picture, yeah. there were a lot of pills. <laughs> yes. You know, uh, yeah, yeah. So it's a, it was challenging to maintain right. compliance. Yeah. So where, where, do we, where do you go from here? I mean, the, uh, the first question is, is this data basically puts the vitamin business out, in other words, not chelation, but I mean all the consumers that are spending so much money in vitamins for protecting their heart. Do you think this data is strong enough to say, guys, spend that money getting prescription medications that work better and seeing your doctors? I mean, do you think this data is strong enough to just simply go there and say that? Well, I think we've been at that particular point for a long time. Um, the, there have been multiple studies of uh, limited number of vitamins um, that on average uh, have been negative or perhaps even have caused even. harm. Okay. Yeah. And there have been some wonderful meta-analyses done. Uh, there are studies now from the Physician's Health Study uh, looking at one centrum a day yeah. uh, that were recently published in JAMA. Yeah. Um, and certainly for cardiovascular endpoints there was no, no. There was no effect. These, this particular mixture is actually has a lot more in it than even one centrum a day. Um, so that uh, certainly our uh, first uh, conclusion at the very end was that we do not recommend the use of high-dose oral vitamins and minerals as adjunct therapy for patients who've had an acute myocardial infarction. Well, I've got to say, uh, I think it's, this is a big segment of our health-related economy. I yep. think it's great to have it subject to scientific scrutiny. Um, what was kind of surprising to me is there's a very high non-compliance rate among vitamin takers. And I think if you ask any clinician, uh, getting a patient to stop taking vitamins that they bought as supplements uh, is only slightly easier than getting them to lose weight or stop smoking. But, so what, what is going on here? That well, uh, what's, what's really going, what's going on is um, I, you saw that uh, the, the handful of, uh, of these very large pills that you have to take, and Three to take six of them um, a day for year after year, uh, not knowing if you are actually taking placebo, I think is a real problem for many patients. Um, what I can say is that during the time that the infusions were taking place, uh, most patients uh, were taking vitamins. So we had about three quarters of the patients finished at least 30 infusions, and at that time, uh, and at roughly that time, it would be roughly a year, um, three quarters of the patients were taking their vitamins. Um, then the numbers um, began to decrease uh, afterwards. So um, if you look at the results of the study, then that would introduce perhaps a conservative bias. Um, but it's, it's a bias that we can't really address. Now, there was a provocative question asked about um, the key, what is the role of chelation therapy going forward and what has happened in clinical practice? Let's move to clinical practice for a second. So in my area in Beverly Hills, I've actually seen patients requesting chelation therapy. What's, what's happened in, in the, the Southeast United States in this regards? Um, there has been, uh, there have been a number of reviews um, or uh, surveys, uh, part of uh, NHANES uh, surveys. Um, and um, in, in the last two uh, reviews, one was, one was around 2000 and then the other one maybe 2007, um, there was a 62% increase in the amount of chelation therapy used. Um, the numbers still come out relatively small in terms of the United States. It was 111,000 adults. Um, so um, it's, I think that it's 
uh, potentially an, an, an increasing therapy. Certainly, I see patients um, who are either taking chelation therapy or request it. Um, I do not practice chelation therapy clinically. I have been studying and I've been a scientist uh, on this now for a while. Any questions from the audience?